do we not have enough good breweries in Detroit? Is there not a good, enough good beer being made in Detroit that we want to go to Cleveland of all places to get our beer? That's the voice of Devin O'Reilly. And when Devin's on, that means we're talking new restaurants and the best drinks and fun to be had around Detroit as the year comes to a close. Today's episode was recorded live at Hammer and Nail in Midtown. It's on Woodward, just across from the Detroit Symphony Orchestra. And it has a distinct mid-century modern flair, along with a big piece of Detroit's history. A giant neon hammer and nail used to be on top of the building, as the tower used to serve as the headquarters for the Carpenters Union. Now, that art is behind the bar, and we recorded this with the neon glow in our sights. It's Monday, December 16th, 2019. I'm Jarrah Stays, and this is your Daily Detroit. All of that after we tell you that our show this week is brought to you, in part, by the Sleigh Ball. It's a winter dance party this Saturday night, featuring Raven from RuPaul's Drag Race and an ensemble of local drag queens and DJs. The event takes place at St. Andrew's Hall and opens at 9 p.m. The party goes on, well, all night. And here's the deal. Daily Detroit listeners, you get a discount. Use code DAILYDETROIT25 at checkout to get 25% off regular or VIP tickets. And of course, there will be a link in the show notes or visit facebook.com slash hardtopdetroit for more. All right, to our conversation at Hammer and Nail. We have a foursome of fearsome, fun fellows sitting around the table. To my left, Devin O'Reilly, our man about town. He is the spiritual leader and spirits leader of our our coverage for checking out different things. Devin, welcome back to Daily Detroit. It has been a long time. It's good to see you. Thank you so much. I love the new nicknames every time. Spirits leader. I'm going to run with that one. Yeah, well, whichever one you want to put on the business card, we'll do. Uh, next to Devin is Mr. Randy Walker, otherwise known as Persnickety Randy. Randy, it's good to see you. Ahoy. Ahoy, hoy. <laughs> and then, uh, of course, my often partner in crime, Mr. Sven Gustafson. How are you? That's my drink jingling for you. How you doing, Jer? Good to see you. It's good to see you, too. All right, so we are in a corner booth here at Hammer and Nail. It is a beautiful place. It's got, like, this great kind of West Coast vibe to it. Yep. Uh, there's that big, iconic Hammer and Nail sign. And now that it's getting dark out uh, and the city lights are twinkling and shining, it's a it's a nice setting. Look behind us with the medical center uh, oh, setting yeah. and all the lights. It's beautiful. And there's the queue line. It's gorgeous. Yeah. It's all gorgeous. Nothing sets the mood with a cocktail like the Rehabilitation Institute of Michigan. <laughs> so true. <laughs> but seriously, it's a beautiful place right across it is great from, looking. From, the, from the DSO and like close to everything. But we have so much to get through with what's been happening around town. I'm going to start in Dearborn with Tasties. And this is a place that people don't know. It's got phenomenal burgers. Yeah, so Tasties is a burger joint inside the BP gas station on Ford Road in Dearborn. You know, you can actually take a date there. It's worked. You could. I have. That's love. Did you get a second date? Yes. And well, a third. then it worked. But now they have expanded down the street into Dearborn Heights, still on Ford Road, in a strip mall. There's a second Tasty. Oh, my gosh. Well, and I think that might be something that might be a little bit more approachable because the culinary traveler and adventurer is all about the gas station burger. But I think a lot of people, they might not want to go, you know, full weird. Yeah, I can see that. Uh, second up I want to talk about is the gangbusters growth of Bobcat Bonnie's. And uh, they're moving up. They're going to be not moving, but adding a location in Partridge Creek up in Macomb County. Wow. But this place has just caught people's imagination because uh, it's just popular. Yeah, I mean, it started off in Detroit, which is it's just rare that you, know, you start in Detroit and then expand outward. Usually you see places expanding into Detroit. So they're doing something right. I mean, I w I've always been a fan of their brunches. They seem to pull in a really big suburban crowd into Corktown. So uh, they're doing something right, and it's it's impressive to see the growth. Yeah, I actually go to the Corktown location more than the Ferndale location. And you live just like down the yeah, way I'm from Yeah, I'm walking Ferndale. distance from the Ferndale one. It's just, there's not a reason. It's just always ends up the group I'm with. I mean, it's, to be, it's relatively yeah. affordable for, for yeah. what restaurants are nowadays. I yeah, mean, I think it's very approachable. You know, $9 for a brunch dish and then, you know, what is it, $4 for a Bloody Mary? Because I don't splurge for the Tito's. <laughs> do, do they do a good brunch, Bobcat Bunny? Yeah, yeah. Lots of lots of options for brunch. Bloody Mary bar, mimosa bar. They have like 80s and 90s music. Good stuff. And so they're now, I mean, the places that are already open are in Corktown, um, Wyandotte, Ipsy? or did the Wyandotte, Wyandotte one close? Wyandotte, I believe Wyandotte's. Wyandotte closed, Wyandotte's then reopened. Gone. 
Well, then reopened. And yeah, then there's reopened. also Ipsy. Yep. Ipsy. Okay. I was not aware of that so one. So I, I think that, that Bobcat is going to be seen a lot around Metro Detroit. And I'm glad to see some folks, you know, grow and find a market. And whenever we see success like that, I always kind of like try to look at those places and go, what is it they're doing right? So guys, what is Bobcat doing right? Uh, they're casual and approachable. I think that's a big deal here they're in Metro not, Detroit. They're not snooty or stuck up. Uh, super friendly folks. They do everything really well. I think they have a great beer selection. They do good burgers. Um, so outside of the brunch, like we mentioned, but they have a really, really good burger. And they do some good tots and nachos. And um, I don't know. I think I've, everything I've had there has been good. And they don't charge a you know, crap ton of money for it. Yeah, even uh, Ferndale does a happy hour or a late night happy hour burger, fries, and beer for $12. Yeah. Yeah, which is, a, I mean, a great deal. All right, so I don't know if you guys saw, uh, moving on here, but uh, Melody Batons is a friend of Daily Detroit. We've had her on the show before. She's the food critic nowadays at the Detroit News. She just gave her first ever four-star review to a kind of a surprising place, Folk, down there in Corktown on Trumbull. What's her scale? Is it four out of four? Four, four out of four, yeah. Nice. So here's the deal. If you've eaten at Folk, it's not surprising because it's amazing food. I think what's surprising about it is that it's not like a white linen kind of place. It's, no, it's not fine dining. It's clean eating. It's not. It's not like an upscale place. You know, like a like necessarily like let's go out to dinner or to a destination type of place. You know, it's a lunch and breakfast place mostly. I think. Yeah, pretty much. I don't even know if they do dinner. I don't think that they do. I don't think so they do either. It's a it's a pretty limited menu, but I guess they're really embracing the. You know, they're not going to do a lot, but the stuff that they do do they do really well and they do it really fresh their service was great i've only been there once you know you and cheyenne and i jared had lunch there one day i don't know several months ago um i love it you know like i've always joked i eat like a hippie uh it's right up my alley because it's a lot of very local fresh fare you know the food just is is just tasty and and sort of nourishing and everything i love it and i think that you know melody talked about that that it's a little bit of an unconventional choice but i think that you know, she felt this. She she sort of uh, you know felt the same way about it. I think that I do. That it it leaves you feeling very satisfied beyond just sort of full and and that was good. You know, you feel nourished and and healthy. This isn't a place I've tried yet. It's on my list, but I think this review will kick it up a few places on my list for sure. For sure. Okay, from plaudits to closings. Uh, let's go up into the suburbs for just a second here and talk about Mongolian barbecue. It has meant its end up in uh, downtown Royal Oak. I know that this was a chain that was like a really big deal for a long time. And I know there's still locations out there, but it seems to kind of be retreating ground. Is this concept like, is this concept out? Uh, it's hard to say. I mean, Royal Oak is definitely been seeing a lot of change. Um, you know, a lot of restaurants have sort of come and go. Um, Tough to say. I mean, Mongolian barbecue is famous for sort of that, like, you pick your a la carte ingredients and throw it all together in a wok, which always struck me as a little bit risky given the kind of food and ingredients they were using because it's like you have to have a little bit of a sense of cooking, like a little bit of a cooking talent because the potential exists that you could order something that kind of gross. Yeah, it was it's super kitschy. And I think that it when you go back to the general concept and you really break it down, you're assembling your own dinner yeah, and then just having I mean, them right. it for you. If I'm going to pay for the dinner, you tell me what uh, you tell me what's good. I don't know. I, <laughs> I mean, I, to be fair, it's you know nine dollars ninety nine cents for a, a one trip through, so it's not super expensive. Where I have a, a old coworker who had that same thing. Like if I'm paying for dinner, I want it, you know, yeah, serve to me. You, but you you make what you think is good, right. and, and serve it to me. I don't know. I didn't mind it. One hack, if you're still you didn't interested, mind it, in, but did you love it? Like it was a good lunch. I. Quick lunch as well because you could go and cook and and eat in you know half hour forty minutes. Um, dinner not as often just because of the locations uh, where they are lately. But quick hack if you are still interested in checking out the place, they put the meat first and then the veggies. But if you get the veggies first and then put the meat on top, you can put lots more food in that little bowl because the meat just kind of glues it all in place. <laughs> <laughs> Meat glue. <laughs> meat From glue. Randy. That could be the name of your cookbook, Randy. When you're Randy's <laughs> meat glue. Um, you know, speaking of quick service, one place we're not going to get quick service is the proposed food hall that was going to be in Chroma in New Center. That is not going to be a thing, reports Cranes of Trade Business. And I, I'm i surprised to see that this one's not going to happen. They were going to do a whole, like, you know, some similar to what they have at the Detroit Shipping Company, where it was going to be a food hall, lots of places to eat, and that got scratched. Unfortunately, I'm unsurprised that it's now not happening because it's that seems to be kind of a trend right now in the New Center area. And my 
my bigger question is when is there going to be a viable bar or restaurant that o- concept that opens up there? I well, mean, I mean there, there are viable bars up there. Like I love there's Keesling. a couple, but Keesling I feel like is a little more Mil- Milwaukee Junction. Definitely more but, Milwaukee. But, but, Junction. but it's literally a block away from Chroma. Like Chroma and like you could literally you can literally yeah. see it out the but patio. You, but you're asking yeah. whether there's when there's going to be viable bars well, in the new center. And yeah, let's be I, honest, like new center Milwaukee Junction, yes, they're separate neighborhoods for sure. But if you're thinking about fun and doing things, they're very close to each other. I just I wasn't surprised that a food hall didn't didn't get off the ground. There, yeah, I'm you know? I'm definitely surprised because uh, CBS just did a story on food halls uh, showcasing Detroit Shipping Company even, and uh, it seems to be a popular trend across the country. But that food hall in Fort Street Galley still hasn't found its feet, even with some changes. Right, That's you were talking to me about that the other day. It's a terrible location and it's ungodly expensive. Is it still ungodly expensive? Uh, I was there a few weekends ago. A chicken sandwich and fries was somewhere around nineteen dollars after tax and tip. Oh, you can't do that at lunch. And then and then you got to go to the bar, so that's another twelve, thirteen dollars. Why do you say it's a bad location? It's the financial district. Who's in the financial district outside of business hours? Well, it's a great location if you're a lunch spot. If you're an affordable grab and go lunch spot, but a nineteen dollar chicken sandwich and fries is not an affordable lunch either. Well, so, well, yeah, because I think what people forget is that in that section of town, it's all like corporate folks who are all usually driving in. You know, you got the lunch crowd. They've got limited dollars. They've got families, all that kind of stuff. And a lot of them, frankly, don't leave their office buildings to go for lunch or for anything. Well, you've got a corporate day job, Randy. Yeah. Like they drive. It's in so they hard to get for you to get friends to go out and try places. Once a week, if I'm lucky, I'll get coworkers to go outside of the building. I mean, you text me, and I'll come down and meet you. Yeah. Before coworkers will come out, and I think that's a big thing. Like more people who work downtown need to be willing to like go out. I know Randy. I think you and I need to put together. Like we all need to put a little bit of a guide together. Like depending on what building you're working in, to like go have some fun in the city because there's so many good restaurants. It's definitely a cultural thing about Detroit. You know, it's it's the whole mentality of drive into work. You know, pull into the parking garage, walk directly into your office, and then stay there until you leave. And then when the workday is over. Go right back to your car and, and leave immediately. Don't. I mean, it's kind of the type mix. types of workplaces we have here too. Right. I have a food court downstairs, which just got a in like, the Renson. Yeah, in the yeah, Renson. The Renson just got that uh, Beyond Juice or whatever. Uh, it's coming soon, and then you know the Blue Cross Tower has the cafeteria downstairs, so there's no reason to need to go out. Um, like if you didn't but, bring your lunch, yeah. you can get stuff really quick. Right, right. Right, but I feel like we really need to in- encourage the adventurer spirit, whether it's at lunch or dinner or whatever, because like there are so many great things in Metro Detroit and Detroit, but like you got to kind of look for them a little bit, you know? Absolutely. All right, so moving on, Highlands. I know that, Randy, you and I touched on this a little bit, but... Devin, I know you have thoughts, and I think it's uh, it's a, certainly a welcome uh, a welcome addition. I mean, it's it, it was Coach Insignia, which was a great kind of fine dining restaurant, which I feel like I went there, but only on very very special occasions. So having a essentially a three concept bar, it's three bars in one. It's the Highlands, the Steakhouse, it's the High Bar, which is the whiskey co- uh, Scotch bar, and then Hertz Seventy One, which is more of kind of the casual wood fire types of food. So you're really getting a three in one combo. Is that enough to bring people not only to the Rensen but then up seventy one floors? It's it's a trek, even if you're coming oh, yeah, from downtown. For sure. Well, you, we were talking about that earlier, and I I have not eaten or drank at any of the establishments, but I did get to see them. I I know somebody who works there, and he took us up Thanksgiving morning, actually, before the turkey trial. We got to go tour around it, and it's beautiful. Obviously, the views are incredible, et cetera. The restaurants and the bars and everything are, are nice, super inviting. Um, but yeah, it takes you, you know, when you once you walk into the Rensen, I mean, okay, so you got to park, you know, assuming that you're driving in, and then walk over to the Rensen, and then walk into, you know, the the Labyrinth building, and then go up. I mean, it's... You have to do two elevators, too. Yeah. You yeah, have to get... Well, yeah, if you're talking about a t- at least a 10-minute... That might be conservative to well, get... I'm saying we're sitting in Midtown Detroit right now. What do you guys think it would take us to, how long from right now to sitting in I the Highlands? I bet you I could have a drink in Birmingham by the time I had a drink there. I wouldn't. That's yeah. it. Sounds crazy, but I, I bet you're not too far. We're low at least. So like that's that's the kind of ridiculous thing to think about. Is like our crowd here. Our crowd here is shaking their head no. Our crowd. Here, I think that it's a good start to drawing people to the Rensen, but I think we need more retail in yeah. the Rensen. 
besides what is there, Pure Detroit and the GM it corporate needs store? Some, it needs some definition, right? Like the Renz could be a really cool idea because it's right near the riverfront. All those things. It could be a destination. It could be. You could you imagine if the Winter Garden was like some place you could actually have like a common area where people had drinks and food. I know there's a Panera and, and a Damo some Andiamo, Andiamo thing, but like not a lunch crowd. But like, what if you actually like geared it up and said we're gonna make this a fun place to be, especially during the warmer months to be on the riverfront. I mean, but that gets to my whole thing that I believe the riverfront in general is underused. Like, it would be amazing to have Still, more. really? Even with the riverwalk? Okay, so here's my thought on that. Between the General Motors Rensen, and then you go over to, like, the, the Cullen Carousel and all that, you have a sea of terrible surface parking lots. True. And to me, why aren't there street vendors? Why aren't there things like activations in between? Why don't we just get rid of that surface parking? Why don't why doesn't somebody like build some kind of parking structure to get that stuff out of the way and whether it's whether it's businesses on the riverfront, whether it's a mix of residential things like that, like let's bring that space back because like the worst use possible is surface parking lots. I know people got to park, but put them in garages. I agree, but I don't know for sure, but I'm pretty sure that the surface parking lots are used by the Rensen's primary tenant, which I'm not sure if you're aware, but it's a car company. It's called General Motors. Oh, I know. They could build yeah. a garage. <laughs> They could build a garage. You know what? They could build a garage, and here's the deal. They could put retail on the bottom. They could put a garage in the middle and residential up top. They could actually, like, join the 20th century. They could, for sure. And I, I agree. I mean, there are some. There are still a lot more potential than what is realized with the Riverwalk, I think. But, um, yeah. All right. Big news for Detroit pizza lovers. Buddy's is open in downtown Detroit. I know, Sven, you and I went and checked it out. Yep. You were actually pretty happy with the pizza. Devin, you've been there too. Now that it's been open, we haven't been since it's open. What's the what's the, and you too, Randy? Yeah. What's so the they, intel, guys? What, now that it's open, what's the story? They officially opened Wednesday. Okay. I was there Monday night before. Okay, but you got to see, get service. Oh and yeah, stuff like we that. had okay. a party there. So, I mean, I think it's, it's kind of what you said. I think we all know buddies. So the the question was going to be, you know, can the food be consistent? Is buddies buddies? Is the you know can they keep that quality? And I think the answer is yes. I mean, they've done a really good job of. Uh, keeping the same consistency, the slice of pizza that you'll have at the downtown was is the same kind of taste and, and feel as the one you'll have in Detroit or Dearborn or wherever else. So I think they did a really good job. Big space, so you've got a lot of room. You've got a bar there. Um, the location is fantastic, although that location has had some issues. Uh, places in that specific location there and under the Broderick Tower and the Madison, the location on its face is really good. So I would imagine they'll do a great job picking up the Lions crowd and the Tigers crowd. Oh, and yeah, the concert they're going to mop it up when and, the sport, and I think, sports ball's going on. And I think it's great that they're doing like fast service, quick service window. Yeah, yeah I think they get what, like, whether it's the office crowd or the running to the game crowd, being able to like walk up and just grab a slice and a pop or something sounds absolutely perfect. Now, I was impressed by their cocktail menu because they actually had a whole page of classic cocktails. Yeah, yeah they, that they, was that was a welcome a welcome sight. I Guys, agree. speaking of cocktails, I'd just like to interject that uh, my old fashioned here, the uh, the the menu old fashioned as they here call it here, the hammer and nail, it, which is a slightly you know, it's their own take on the classic uh, old school, old fashioned is very tasty. As is my white Russian. It is amazing. It's a nitro white Russian. Nitro white Russian. Absolutely great. Okay. So there is a place that I have not visited to, but our man about town knows what's going on. Let's talk Layla. Let's, let's do it. Because I, I have heard so many good things. I was drinking in Gross Point Park, and people were talking about Layla. And that tells me, like, If it's okay, big in Gross Point Park. Well, you know what I mean. Like when I know. Am, when I'm drinking in places that are off the beaten path, although I do like drinking in Gross Point, like, um, which it sounds crazy, but follow no, me good. sometimes. Yeah, yeah. Some great bars over there. When I hear it, like, all over the place, I heard about it in Dearborn. Everyone's talking about Layla. Well, I would say it definitely fits where it's at. So Capitol Park uh, is becoming quite the tourist destination. I don't say that in a derogatory way. I say that as, you know, it's great. There's people from all over the metro area coming to Capitol Park to either, you know, get coffee at Desert Oasis or get steak at Prime and Proper or get pastries at Canal, which has been doing incredible business. So Layla is, you know, upscale Mediterranean restaurant. It does everything really well. It is it is upscale. The design is incredible. Um, my only knock on it would be as a Dearborn night or you know well, for most of my Dearborn. life from Dearborn I've had I've had better Middle Eastern food and I've had <laughs> really? it for, I've had it for half the price <laughs> wow it is Shots what, fired. it is what it is I mean hey I don't I don't think many people are going to argue with that but so it's, it's Middle just, Eastern more than Mediterranean 
quote it's, unquote. It's been at least more than Mediterranean. So, I, you know, when we went, we had some different dips. So the baba ganoush, which was very good. The hummus was very good. Um, you know, $10, $12 a plate. Go to Dearborn and get it for five bucks. But, sure. you know, you're you're paying for where you are. And that's my I guess that's my point is you're paying for the ambiance. You're paying for being in Capitol Park. You're paying for being in the middle of downtown Detroit. But you can go down Warren Avenue and their shawarma is going to be it's true, as but good you, or better. You know, uh, there aren't that many. I mean, there's an Anita's Kitchen downtown now, but there's not a whole lot yet of uh, Middle Eastern food to be had downtown. No, there isn't. And, but, and this is on the premium end. So they're coming in on the sure. premium end. There's probably still an opportunity for someone to come in um, on the more approachable end of, of the Mediterranean. But it's fantastic. Like Anita's or, or Bucharest, which is no longer even, I would say there, even but, more yeah. approachable than Anita's because their, their bowls are like 15 bucks. But I would say that they also have a full cocktail menu, which was really good. Their cocktails are really good. My like recommend, Devin recommendation for that would be for going for drinks and apps, it's absolutely fantastic. And drinks, uh, not a common thing to be found at uh, most Middle Eastern places in, around town, especially down in Dearborn. You know? No, yeah, exactly. And they they had they do a really good job of actually incorporating some uh, kind of Middle Eastern elements into the drinks. So I think one of the drinks I had like a date syrup uh, with uh, with whiskey and uh, some some of the different uh, Randy's uh, not his and, approval on that one. Yeah, it was very, very much so. You know, you mentioned Dearborn. I want to stay there for a second, and I know that we actually have a deeper engagement about longboard coming up but uh you know that's made some waves over there in downtown dearborn need some waves pun intended <laughs> see pun intended Ooh, yeah good one yeah longboard's great i mean we've all been there at this point um i think it's it's really cool the way i kind of describe it is like it's the type of place that would open up in detroit but is opening up in dearborn which is great to see that places like that making it out to the the suburbs for they, sure from the people that brought you jolly pumpkin it's their take on kind of hawaiian um uh pacific pacific island style so a little bit of tiki a little bit of pizza right would you say it's kind of yeah. like a little in, bit our, of tiki in our longer feature coming out later i kind of describe it as like an on-ramp to tiki yeah I would say that. And, and that's big words coming from you because you are a Tiki fan. That's um, for sure. So Bucharest is continuing to build their empire as well into the suburbs. And so, like, I just got to say, like, again, that's another thing that I feel like it's really approachable. It's something that's just, like, taking off. It's like there's this love for Bucharest that is, um, I think, unparalleled for people yeah. who've had it. Yeah, I mean, you can't beat it. There, can, there can't be enough Bucharest at this point. I mean, they've got to... It's almost like I, I think about, you know, in the, the, like the Chick-fil-A world or whatever it is, where it's just they've got this formula down. They do shawarmas as good as anybody. They can mass produce them. They they're do $5. They're $5 still, yeah, right? which is crazy. And if, you don't, if you're not into shawarma, I love the Nikki salad. It's absolutely great. Yeah, and uh, two, two observations from me on, on uh, Bucharest. Uh, one is actually not related to Bucharest, but shout out to their breakfast wrap sandwich with... I didn't the know they had scrambled eggs. Wow. Well, at least the Livernoy location does. Uh, scrambled eggs, French fries, and then like the kind of Greek salad type uh, fillings with like tomato, feta, cucumber, and onion. It's really, really good. But the other thing I was going to ask, Randy, you might know uh, Balkan House opening a oh, second yeah, location yeah. in Ferndale. Yeah. I don't. It's not open yet. I don't it think. is open. It is. Open. I haven't been there yet. Oh wow, that's it's huge. on my list. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's a Hamtramck. That's a sensation. I, spreading out. It's something that just like caught fire and just. Went up, but I'm really glad to see to see these like independent places like get traction and all of that. Yep. All right. So it is the holidays. We have warm cocktails all around us. I do want to talk about some great bars to check out. You know, in this December season, uh, tis I, the season. Tis the season. Uh, specifically, like I want to talk about cozy bars, and I'll start off the conversation by saying, you know, some of the best holiday decorations happen at Abix down in Southwest Detroit. I love that place over on Gilbert Street. And, of course, I am a dive bar connoisseur, so I'm biased. But favorite cozy bars, everybody? So, I mean, I'm, I'm a big fan of the Whiskey Parlor. Nice and cozy up there above Grand Trunk. Um, great selection of whiskey. Comfortable seating. You're kind of up above all the lights in, uh, um, near Campus Martius. So that's a nice little kind of cozy place. I'm going to go for kind of an unconventional choice, I guess, maybe. Uh, and that's Joe Bar out in Hazel Park. Um, okay. I... I think that it has reverted back to Joe Bar after uh, being Frida Patitos. Uh, uh, Latito at Latito. Joe Bar. Latito, Latito, sorry. Latito. Yeah. Not Frida uh, Patitos. Um, but I, I have heard from somebody who has been there recently that it has indeed gone back to Joe Bar. But that place just had has a really cozy place. It's dark in there. They've got kind of curved banquette seating, you know, booths and everything. Um, it's a great place to kind of hunker down on a cold winter, you know, when the weather's just horrible outside. It's a great place to hunker down and get a, and a, get a quality cocktail. Oh, boy. I don't know that 
cozy is something I look for in a bar, I would guess I would have to say... I mean, Miracle is pretty good. Yeah, Miracle is great. I, would, I was going to lean towards the Oakland anyway, even without the Miracle concept. So I think I'll, I'll go with the Oakland. It's uh, dim lighting, but with candlelight at, at all of the seats. And, not, they, and they got all kinds of Christmas bling going. I yeah, just went and by now, it today. Yeah, I, I stopped in there for a Miracle, and uh, it's decked out to the nines <laughs> with Christmas lights and, and things. Honorable mention to Ghost Bar too. I got that is a that is a cozy ass bar up there um, <laughs> on the top of the uh, on top of the uh, Whitney Mansion. Oh, I bet, I bet. All right, so to round it out, to finish us, to bring us home, Devin, I hear we have some out of state interlopers moving into town. Oh, why do we got why do we got to end on a negative note? But no, uh, in all seriousness, um, is it the sa- what's the saucy saucy, saucy, saucy brewers, brewers at saucy City brewers. Modern and saucy that whole like, fancy thing? Yeah, so I I heard the saucy brewers and I I hadn't heard of it before, but no, come to either. find out, it's a Cleveland based brewery. And my question Cleveland? is, Cleveland, do we not have enough good breweries in Detroit? Is there not a good enough good beer being made in Detroit that we want to go to Cleveland of all places to get our beer? I was gonna say. Do we not have enough Cleveland influence in Detroit already? <laughs> so, well, I don't know. Do we? So I can't say I'm looking forward to this one. Um, it is going in the city modern, which, you know, I don't know. Draw your own conclusions this about is, what, this I mean, is the, so what the crowd's going to be. For. Kind of swanky new Super development. Super luxury. I mean, I know that there are places. Rush Park. I have interviewed people who have paid $900,000 or close to $900,000 to move into this place. It's modern. Lord. Yeah, so maybe they'll pass it off and people won't know it's a Cleveland-based brewery because the people who are moving in there are from maybe other it'll places. Maybe they're saucy attitude. It, maybe it'll be. Well, I'll, I'll have the saucy attitude then because uh, I will not be drinking any Cleveland beer. Ooh. Ooh, wow, Ooh. that's strong words wow, from Mr. Strong, O'Reilly. Strong words. All right. I, I know nothing about Saucy Brewers. I've never heard of them, but I do I do agree. It's. I mean, it's always weird when you bring in somebody from out of state. It's like, I mean, we got a million breweries in Michigan. We've got a lot of good ones. If you, even if you wanted to bring in like somewhere like a Colorado or Boston or some, you know, somewhere that was known for, you know, having some good beer, but Cleveland? Well, it, I guess maybe the bigger point maybe is like you brought in somebody that has zero brand recognition around here, you know? Like, if you're going to bring somebody like, from I'd out of state... Of, like, I had never heard of this place. No, me neither. But we'll see. I mean... Can't wait for that review. <laughs> right? Like, uh, well, you know, it's one of those things of... Uh, and there's then, and da- then they burn the place to the ground. <laughs> well, you know, if there's anything consistent with Daily Detroit, it's our homerism and our hate of Ohio. <laughs> um, you're here. <laughs> all right, well, Devin O'Reilly, Randy Walker, Sven Gustafson... Thank you for being here. Thank you to Hammer and Nail for being very hospitable to us for this segment. It's kind of great to be able to do this one outside of the studio and get a look at what's what's happening out there in the world. And uh, everybody, hey, thanks a lot. It's been fun and uh, happy holidays, everybody. Ho, Cheers, ho, ho, everyone. Ho. Cheers. And we're done for today. Thanks to our members for making Daily Detroit possible. When you support Daily Detroit, you're supporting local people who are making it happen each and every day for your podcast machines. You can join our other members or become an advertiser at patreon.com slash daily Detroit. Also, thanks to Hammer and Nail for their hospitality. And thanks to Cheyenne Nosserini for working behind the scenes on site. I know it was tough running traffic. And finally, thanks to you for listening. I'm Jer Stays. Take care of each other, and we'll see you around Detroit.